Hey, it's Matt with McGee Farms, and we're going to be doing a little bit of maintenance on the Coleman BT200X. Now, you've probably seen these things, Lowe's, Home Depot, your local farm store, the last couple years started getting these in. I saw them. My first opinion is, yeah, they'd probably be fun, but... Uh, yeah, they look like they're cheaply made, probably aren't going to hold up. So, uh, yeah, I uh, didn't mess with them at all. Then I started seeing some videos on YouTube, how they, you know, soup them up pretty easily, do a little work, and uh, how much fun they are. And I started looking around, and I found this one on Facebook Marketplace for, I think, 200 250 bucks. It was pretty cheap. And uh, I'm like, yeah, you know, I'll bring it home, play with it a little bit. If you've got uh, some property, these things are amazing. For as little as they are, they're really simple to work on. I mean, I'm 5'10", 200 pounds, and this thing pulls me anywhere on the farm, up some huge hills, like it's nothing. And... Uh, if you've got to work on them, like I said, they're easy to work on. If you got to replace parts, they're cheap. I think last time I looked, uh, an engine on Coleman's website is like 49 bucks if the whole engine went out. So, uh, yeah, definitely uh, definitely worth it. They're a lot of fun. I, I like riding it. The kids, when they come over, like riding it. The other thing, what I use it for, is I've got several barns on the property, and when I'm moving... You know, a tractor here or there, because i got to have a truck and a tractor in a spot, and it's just me. I'll load this in back of the truck, take it down there, drop it off, and uh, come back, move a tractor, and use it for going back and forth, because it's easy to pick up and, and put in the truck. But anyway, yeah, these are a lot of fun. If you have seen them and just kind of ignored them, they're definitely worth considering. But I've had this about a year. We're going to do a little, a little maintenance on it. Uh, gonna, I've got to tighten the chain, so I figure while I got it in, let me do everything. So we're going to start off with the air cleaner here. And should have a little uh, little screw on the, uh, or nut on the top. I'll take this off. And you should be able to get to the air cleaner. And you got another little wing nut there. It'll come off. Now these are just a cheap paper air cleaner. Uh, you do not want to try to wash it off. You do not want to try, uh, you know, to soak it in oil or anything like that. You're going to destroy it. So basically what you would do is just take this little uh, foam piece off. I can't do this one-handed while I got the camera, uh, but I'm gonna do it here in a minute. But uh, you would just take this off, kind of blow out the, uh, the little fins on it, and uh, then you just put it right back together, set it back on. But while it's off, you can get to the spark plug. Spark plug is right here. Like I said, I've had it for about a year. Spark plug might be good, it might not, I don't know. But after a year riding, I figure I'm going to change the spark plug, you know, kind of spring maintenance. So it's right there. You get right on it with a socket, pull it out, and I've got a new one I'm getting ready to put in. Once you get done with this part, everything goes right back together like uh, you took it off. Once we get done with that, I'm going to tighten the chain, and then I'm also going to uh, set the brakes and... Uh, then the last thing I'm probably going to do is change the oil in this. So I'm going to turn the camera off here, and I'm going to get the air cleaner and the spark plug uh, fixed up and back together. All right, so I've got the air cleaner back on. I've got the spark plug changed. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to tighten up the chain and adjust the brakes on this. These chains, probably can't see it too well with the uh, chain guard on. Maybe here... You see, there's a lot of play in this. And these chains, they start to stretch out. I mean, this uh, machine hasn't been run a whole lot before I got it. And uh, I haven't run it too heavy. I mean, I've run it around the farm a lot. 
But, uh, you know, as far as adjusting the chain and then adjusting the brake, it's pretty, uh, pretty simple. What you're going to do is you're going to get on, there's two back axle nuts. You're going to get on these. You're going to loosen them a little bit. You're not going to take them off. That should probably give, give me enough there. I'm going to swing around to the other side. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. And that's apparently a different size. So i got to get another socket. So let me stop the camera. All right, so i got another socket on there. I loosen that up. So there should be play in this now. So what you're going to do is on both sides, you've got these adjusters. You're going to turn them just, uh, probably just about a crank or two, just enough that you're going to pull the, uh, the wheel back. And then by pulling the wheel back, uh, by pulling that wheel back, you're going you're gonna to end up just uh, tightening the chain up a little bit. But you want to do like a, probably about a half turn on each side uh, at a time because you want to make sure that you've got them both even. You do not want that axle to be off balanced and not straight. So uh, I've got a wrench here. I'm going to tighten them up a little bit. Ideally, you would want a socket. I don't have a, uh, a deep socket small enough. Well, I do, but uh, I don't have it here, and I don't want to walk all the way down to the barn when this should work perfectly too. It's just going to be a little bit of a little bit of a pain to do, but not too bad. So I'm gonna get that. Now I'm going to see that's loose. So I'm going to tighten it. Add one full turn. And I'm going to do the same with this side. I'm going to do one full turn. And I'm going to keep doing that until I got the chain uh, tight to where I kind of want it. And then as soon as I have it tight, that's moving the axle. So that's going to move these brakes as well. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to adjust these brakes so that they're engaging where I want them as well. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this tight where I want it, and then I'll show you how to do the brakes, and then we'll put the, uh, the axle back as well. All right, two turns on each side was enough that it got the, got the chain. It's like a little play in it. You want a little play. You just don't want a whole lot. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to lube that chain really good because it does need that. But, uh, you know, for right now, I'm just trying to get it to as tight as I want it. I'm going to run into town, grab some dinner here in a little bit. And while I'm there, I'll probably just get some uh, spray-on chain lube and uh, get, it, get it good and lubed up. But uh, now that you've done that, the brakes, you've moved the axle just a hair. And so I'm pulling the brakes, and these brakes really aren't engaging hardly at all. So what you're going to do, pretty simple too, you have a little nut right here, which is your adjustment. You're just going to uh, tighten it up. You're going to move that uh, just enough to where they're engaging when you want them to engage. Uh, nice and simple. Once that's done, I'm uh, actually I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tighten the uh, axle up because... The axle doesn't need to be, I don't think the axle needs to be loose when I'm doing the brakes. I think actually it'd be better uh, for it not to be. So I'm going to go ahead, tighten it up, and then I'm going to adjust these brakes. And then we're going to change the oil, which is very simple on this as well. All right, so I got the brakes on, or I got the brakes adjusted. And one thing with the chain I was going to mention earlier, and I forgot to... An easy way to tell to make sure you don't have it too tight is uh, once I lower it off these jack stands is I'm just going to walk it forward and see if it uh, 
doesn't easily go forward like uh, like the brakes on or something. That's uh, probably means the chain's too tight and it's keeping it from going forward. But we'll do that once I drop it down. But I'm going to take the oil out and it is really easy to do. I've got an 11 millimeter wrench. I don't know if it's a standard or a metric, but the 11 fit on. I keep these uh, around because I use them for so much, and I'm going to use this to collect the oil in. And the engine has a little spacer right here and a nut. So all you have to do is uh, bring the nut out, but you have to put a wrench right here. There's some little grooves on the spacer to keep it from coming out. Otherwise, you're going to have a mess. So, you just, like I said, just put a wrench in here. Get a ratchet on here, open it up, drain the oil out. Then, once it's done and I put it back together, I'm going to lower it before I put the oil in. This will take 20 ounces of oil, which is less than a quart. So what I'm going to do is, uh, just, just to be safe, is I'm just going to add a little bit at a time and keep checking the dipstick because I don't have like an exact 20 ounce uh, measuring cup to use. So I'm going to do it that way. Uh, 1030, 1040 is good oil for this. I believe it calls for 1030. Uh, I mean, if you're running it hot, 1040. Castor oil, I like castor oil. Uh, I've used it a lot in my cars. Uh, usually I'll go back and forth between castor oil or uh, the Rotex, or, or I'm not Rotex, Rotella which uh, is a diesel oil, but I use it a lot when it comes to ATVs. Well, I use it in my Jeep, my truck, ATVs, little stuff like this. Uh, the diesel oil compared to gasoline oil, it's the same oil, but it has more detergents, and it also doesn't break down at high heat. So something like an ATV or something like this, it's going to be, you know, kind of running at full throttle while you're, most of the time while you're going on it. Uh, it the oil doesn't break down quite as fast if you use the diesel and you know Rotella is cheap and it's a really really good oil so you know I usually try to use that but I couldn't find a 1030 1040 in that locally couldn't hardly find any small things of oil when I was uh, up at two or three of my local stores I don't know if there's a oil shortage coming or what but anyway so I'm going to grab a wrench, I'm going to put a wrench on there, and I'm going to pull this oil off. All right, we're draining the oil out now, and uh, I stand corrected. It's not an 11, it was a 10 millimeter. The 11 was uh, just a little too loose on it. I tried another 10 millimeter, and it didn't want to go on, but uh, yeah, this one uh, worked fine, took it off. Oil in this... I bought this loot used last year. Lady I bought it from lived like a half mile from work and actually just drove it back and forth to work, uh, you know, in uh, the little town that she lived in. And uh, she hadn't dr really driven it that much. I've had it around the farm a good little bit, but not a ton. But I, I should have changed the oil when I got it. I did not. So that was one of the reasons why I had it up to do spark plug and the chain. I was just gonna, I'm like, let me do this to be safe. This oil really, it's black, but uh, it still looks pretty good, you know, looking at it. But it's slowly draining out. And once it's drained, like I said, I'm gonna drop it. And then I'm gonna put oil back in it. And after that, put a little gas in it and it should be ready to go. All right, I've got it down off the jack stands, and the only thing left to do is just put oil back into it. Oil is on this side. Get your little dipstick here. Take it out and uh, get your little funnel and just uh, put a little in at a time, just to make sure you got the right amount. Like I said, it takes 20 ounces, so you don't want to put way too much in. But uh, you want to make sure you got enough because these do run hard. So basically, uh, that's uh, most of the simple maintenance uh, you know, you're going to be doing on these bikes. Not too hard. And uh, like I said, they're a lot of fun. 
So uh, I'm going to put oil in it, and then the next step is to take it out and try it out, which will be a lot of fun as well. So anyway, it's Matt the Momo Hunter from McGee Farms. If uh, you enjoyed the video, if it helped you out and uh, on, on doing maintenance on your own, please consider subscribing to our channel, maybe uh, liking the video, leaving us a comment. It is appreciated, and it helps the channel grow. Until next time, have a great day.